What is going on guys? I am Jory Goodman, the time teller. A little impromptu episode because, um, I don't know, I made an episode recently titled Everything I Wish I Knew Before Buying an Automatic Watch and people got kind of upset and they were like, well, what about quartz watches? Tell us about quartz. And I was like, well, okay. So uh, here's everything I wish I knew before buying a freaking quartz watch. I'm wearing my Seiko Tuna SBBN 031 and uh, yeah, I love, this is pretty much Kind of the only quartz watch I own that's not a G-Shock, but anyway, let's talk about it. It's 4.05 p.m. Let's get down to business. My hair looks really cool right now. That's right, guys. These watches are powered by batteries, which means they have no soul. And um, yeah, here's everything I wish I knew before buying one. So first up, a lot of them are overpriced. Now, specifically, I'm talking about fashion watches. Now, there are companies that start with M. There are companies that start with A. They're actually both using the same watches. Yes, I'm talking about Movement and Alibaba or AliExpress. These watches that like, you can find for like five bucks on AliExpress and then because they have a movement logo, um, you know, they're like 120 to $150. It's just not worth that money at all. Now, why is this? Well, it's because these companies have found a way to uh, just have enormous profit margins by buying really crappy watches with really crappy basic quartz movements and then marking them up so that they can keep a, a bunch of money for themselves. And there's nothing wrong with capitalism. There's nothing wrong with uh, making money and finding undervalued products. But when you're selling like utter crap, you know, then, then there is a problem. But uh, that's why I'm trying to educate the potential buyers. I'm trying to educate you guys so that you understand all these fashion watches. Um, if it's being advertised heavily on social media and there's a bunch of, bunch of influencers on TikTok doing their <laughs> I hope that looked as cool as I thought it looked in my head. So yeah, the first thing that I wish I knew is that like a lot of quartz watches are really crappy and just not worth the money. Which kind of brings me to my next point. The next thing I wish I knew about quartz watches before buying one is that uh, most of them, many of them are not serviceable. Okay, so this means if something goes wrong with your basic quartz watch, uh, most of the time a watchmaker is not going to be able to do anything about it, you know, outside of maybe uh, resetting the hands, like like putting the hands back on the movement, or um, potentially, uh, ooh, this light just turned off, so this, you know, this episode's a train wreck anyway. <laughs> or as I was saying, potentially, you know, uh, changing out the movement for a brand new one, um, they can do that, but they're not really going to be able to service the movement itself. Now that's not every quartz watch. For instance, the Seiko SBBN 031 Tuna has a fully serviceable quartz movement, the 7C46 quartz movement. We're gonna talk about this in a second. The next thing I wish I knew before buying a quartz watch is that uh, many quartz movements, except for the very high-end, more expensive ones, the second hand doesn't match up with indexes. That's incredibly common, and for those of you who have hardcore OCD, like for those of you who just cannot stand any little bit of deviation, um, maybe don't buy a quartz watch because, um, again, unless it's one of the very, very high-end, um, more expensive quartz movements, chances are that as the second hand moves through the dial, uh, potentially it won't be matching up with the indexes. Apparently, that is actually kind of difficult to do. So, um, yeah, I'm not a watchmaker, but apparently that's like not an easy task to get a quartz movement to line up with index. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's I, it's incredibly frustrating and I understand. So this all brings me to the next point. Not all quartz movements are created equal. All right, so that's, I've been alluding to that the whole list, right? Um, some of them are overpriced, not all of them. Uh, most are not serviceable, not all of them. Some are serviceable. Uh, it's very common for the second hand not to match up. Again, not with all of them because some quartz movements are actually quite nice uh, and they have a lot of work and engineering gone into them. Now, if you wanna learn why this SBBN 031 7C46 movement is so dang cool, please check out one of my earlier episodes 
episodes and click up here and watch it because I go over all the engineering uh, that went into this movement. But pretty much uh, the Seiko Tuna's movement has a high torque quartz movement to be able to move these very robust hands. Um, it is mostly metal components, whereas most quartz watches use plastic housing, plastic components. Uh, this is multi-jeweled and uh, again, a bunch of engineering went into this uh, movement and it is quartz, but I think it has a soul. All right, I'm giving this one a free pass. And don't even get me started with the Grand Seiko quartz movements, okay? Those are highly finished, even more detailing, even more effort went into those watches. Just uh, crazy, crazy watches. This light actually died on me right now as well. See, this is why I don't tell myself, you know what, let's just film one more episode today because then the equipment starts failing and um, people complain in the comment section. <laughs> why is the light off? Oh, why is your beard like... Sorry, Steven Spielberg, Martin Scorsese, they're not behind the cameras, it's just me! And Gato. And sometimes Dallin. The next thing I wish I knew before buying a quartz watch is that in all probability, they're more consistently accurate than most mechanical movements. And this is something that hardcore, you know, mechanical watch collectors do not want to admit. They don't want to admit that this battery powered watch is over time more consistently accurate than their mechanical powered watch, mechanically powered watch, I should say. But that's just the case. That's, that it is what it is. It's a robot. Come on, robots. They just, they know things. They're a bunch of ones and zeros and binary code. This doesn't taste good. Connie bought these sparkling ice. This is watermelon flavored. I'm not sponsored. Uh, if I was sponsored by them, it would be difficult for me to speak nicely of this because this one tastes pretty bad actually. Which brings me to my sixth, I think it's six. Gato, count them up. Okay, which brings me to the final point on this list. Just because you have a quartz watch doesn't mean it's bad or cheap or less than another watch. You gotta get what you like, guys. I know people um, that like wearing a watch, but they don't want the vulnerability of wearing a mechanical watch and they just want something that's gonna tell the time and that's perfectly fine. And again, I know a lot of hardcore collectors that really do like certain quartz watches. Even if we're just talking about G-Shocks, dude, every collector should have a G-Shock, but uh, even past that, okay, like this tuna, it's quartz, it's incredible. I think this is one of my favorite watches that I reach for a lot of the time because it's always running and uh, yeah, it's not solar powered, but this movement lasts five to seven years. On their website, on Seiko's website, it says three to five years, but a lot of people have been running it for like well past five years with no issues at all. So um, yeah, guys, they're reliable, they're accurate. Uh, some are less expensive than others, but some are very, very expensive. Just because you have a quartz watch doesn't mean it's not a real watch. Uh, still doesn't have a soul though. So let's not get that twisted. Quartz watches still don't have souls. Oh, why do I keep drinking it? Anyway. Guys, if you learned something new, if you had some fun in this episode, uh, if you want to contribute by adding your own reasons as to why or why not get a quartz watch, leave that in the comment section. I want to hear from you and we can kind of continue the conversation there. And I want to thank you so much because we just broke past 91,000 subscribers. I feel like we just hit 90 and then we gained like a thousand in like a couple days and it's just crazy. Things are moving so fast here. So thank you so much guys. 100,000 right around the corner. All thanks to you. Check out the links in the description will take you to my Amazon affiliate store, a bunch of cool watch related gear there, uh, www.thetimetellershop.com, the number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches serviced with a one year warranty handpicked by me. Uh, that's my personal website, personal vintage shop. And uh, yeah, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, hit the bell icon because it helps out a whole bunch. And um, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.